Tenex, B&M out of New York and Global Capital Inc. We are committed to the process of researching and bringing to the business community across the world a high level of information that can literally help in the growth and expansion of your business, your ideas, and your brand. Today, I want to look at a number of important topics. Today, I want to look at access to capital. I want to look at the corporate culture and the value proposition. And I want to look at corporate leadership. So if you're in business or intend to get into business, I want to encourage you to like, subscribe, and share, and press the notification bell so you will be the first to get this information that we are bringing to you on a daily basis. I want to say this. I have done the research with thousands of persons over many years. And the common belief is that access to capital is the major factor why they are not <laughs> scaling and leapfrogging the way that they would want to. And of course, there's some truth to that story. But I must say to you that it is not the complete truth. Access to capital does not guarantee the success of your business. And today we will look at all of those reasons or some of those reasons why I'm saying this. Starting a business does not guarantee you're going to build wealth or attain the level of success that you think you're entitled to. Why? Because there's a right and wrong way to start that business. We have seen hundreds of thousands of persons across the world. They're starting a business with a primary focus of cash flow maximization. Do not get me wrong. While there's absolutely nothing wrong with cash flow maximization, there must be deeper motive that is driving your interest in business. Again, we will examine some of those issues today. So again, we're going to be looking at access to capital, the corporate culture and the value proposition, and corporate leadership. Now, for those who might be joining me for the first time, just before I get into the, to today's program, my name is Gary Thompson. I'm a business development consultant by profession. I'm a humanitarian by nature, and I'm the self-published best-selling author for several books. I'm the author for Billionaire Codes and Manager's Toolkit. I'm also the author for my most recent book, which is titled 10X branding and marketing blueprint. And today again, I will be reading from that book just before I get into today's discussion. And I will be sharing some information with you from that book that would be harsh. I'm gonna to say to you that I'm gonna to present to you information that might sound very tough, but I wanna show you it is the absolute truth based on the research that we are doing across the region and across the world. Our mission here is not to give you fluff and untruth. Our mission is to give you hard, solid information that really awaken you to the realities of doing business. And once you are serious and you're prepared to become the global thinkers and social actors and transformational leaders, you're prepared to become the dream makers, game changers, and the trendsetters, we will work with you to get you to that point but we are not gonna give you the fluff to, that says that getting into business, you're gonna be successful from the get-go. What I will share with you today, as I said, is gonna be harsh, but there are alternatives. And one of those alternatives that you should begin to look at is how to build up a strong digital marketing present with your products, your services, and your brand. Again, if you're into business or you intend to get into business or you know anyone who is into business, I want you, you and them to be encouraged to like, subscribe and share, press the notification bell 
Uh, so you will be the first to get these programs that is coming from Global Capital Inc. and 10X b &M LLC out of New York on a regular basis. Now, <clears throat> I begin by reading from my book title, 10X Branding and Marketing Blueprint. First impression in branding and marketing must be designed as your larger than life expression of how you truly feel about your workforce, the target market, and the public. Again, we are not just saying this because I want to say it. I'm saying this because of what the research is saying to me. Your larger than life branding strategy must be designed to achieve influence by standing out and by creating lasting impact on the minds of key stakeholders. In this case, we have identified three key stakeholders. There may be more. We talk about your workforce as a key stakeholder. We talk about your specific target market who are going to be the main source of cash flow, and we talk about the general public. They can be the main source of referral. But what emphasis is placed on the workforce? The workforce are the people who are interfacing with the customers. They're interfacing with, with the, the sales through marketing, through public relation. What does your brand, your value proposition say about them? I'm not going to get into that today. I'm just giving you some of what we're saying, and, I'm going to, and this is a lead up to making first impression. Now I continue. <clears throat> the physical infrastructure and physical space of the corporate building must be designed to catch the eyes of the key stakeholders. In a glance, and in a manner that inspired them to take the right action towards your brand. And this is what I'm saying here. The research again is showing that the companies that are able to leverage unique physical infrastructures are able to make strong impression, but it's clear that every company cannot do this or do not know of innovative approaches to make this happen. I'll continue to read. Because of the high cost associated with developing real estate and owning prime corporate building, most business startups would be rendered incapable of capitalizing on the important area, on this important area of branding, Leveraging a strong corporate brand positioning statement. Again, we are talking about brand positioning. We are talking about making strong first impression. And again, the research is saying to us, the Alibaba, the Microsoft, the Amazon, perhaps the Giftland, who are able to leverage these infrastructures as a way of appealing to their target market, they're going to be able to achieve more, faster, and perhaps at more cost-effective means. Later on, we'll go deeper into the analysis, but I'm just giving you an intro into some critical information that you need to consider as you position yourself in business. Their inability to leverage innovation in real estate ownership, design in physical infrastructure, build targeted brand appeal in the ambience and aesthetics means that they would have to forego the opportunity of realizing a competitive advantage in positioning the brand in the market. Most business startups they will have to forego the tremendous opportunity that can be gained if they're able to leverage the infrastructure, the corporate infrastructure, as a means to appeal to the specific target group. 
So I continue to read. Those companies and business startup that are able to capitalize on, mark, on making a strong market entry through physical infrastructure and physical space ownership, design, and leverage that truly represents strong corporate ambience and aesthetics are the ones that will be able to better position their brands in the market and attain much larger market share because of first impression and how it influences confidence, trust, and credibility. And these are things that we all often talk about. The market will resist your products and services, largely because there is not enough information or at least not enough confidence, trust, and credibility that is built up in that brand. So you will have resistance. But those entities that are able to leverage unique corporate infrastructure, they're able to significantly bring down the confidence barrier, the trust barrier, and beat in faster to build up credibility in the products and services that they're offering. The facts, the research are showing this. Remember I talk about strong digital marketing present? I'll come to that just now. So I want to table again, some recommendations and some solutions that we're seeing. There's some countries that are doing this and in some country developing and middle income countries, this is like, sitting waiting for your fairy tale godmother or godfather to come and create these possibilities for you. It may never happen, but I read. And this is what 10X, b and LLC out of New York and Global Capital Inc. is suggesting. 10X, b and LLC out of New York and Global Capital Inc. believe that strategic intervention, strategic public-private partnership, and even independent private investment can help business startup to rise above this business startup dilemma. The development of branded corporate units or branded office unit as a modern facility business startup hub can enable these entrepreneurs to start their business operation in an ideal space that truly inspire and motivate first time users to want to invest and do business with their brand. So there is a couple of solutions that has been tabled and there's much more that can be tabled. And of course, as persons and businesses become our client, we will be able to tell you how to get past this dilemma. But I want you to really understand there's tremendous significance based on the research in the the brand, building a strong corporate infrastructure. But as I just said, one of the other solutions, because we are seeing that your business that they simply have a digital platform, they have a strong digital platform that is using the internet, using social media, using some of those mass communication platform that truly represents their brand. And many of them, they're able to do it. now. Depending on the type of business model that you have, it may work for you, but it's important to also understand a wide range of businesses that this is not necessarily working for. Those analysis, as we deal with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis and you are part of the master classes, we will talk more about this. Now, let's get into today's discussion. And we're talking about access to capital because it's key to any business. I want us to talk about the corporate culture and uh, the value proposition and also talk about corporate leadership, all right? Now, when we talk at Global Capital Inc. about access to capital, we are literally talking about a capital mix. And of course, there's a said access to capital is not a guarantee 
for your business success. But there's a number of things that you want to invest the time, talent, and resources to understand long before you take that capital. There are many persons out there who are striving to access debt capital. You're striving to access equity capital. You're striving to access uh, credit capital. You are trying to come up with innovative ways to leverage smart capital. And I wanna say to you, long before you access those capital, there's a number of things that you should be thinking about before you put yourself in that position to buy a debt. Now, on our platform, we talk about four important things. One is understanding the capital portfolio. Do you understand the capital portfolio enough? What are the range of portfolios that exist in the debt capital market? It's important for you to understand that. You know, you need to understand overdraft, how to leverage that platform. Is there a smart way to leverage that platform? And are you leveraging that smart approach in the overdraft setup? Are you, do you understand credit cards well enough to be able to understand the, the, the deadline, all right, with your debt obligation, and perhaps how to navigate that, all right, as a means of bringing down costs for capital to move the process forward? Do you understand the capital portfolio? It's not just about accessing it, but it's important to understand the capital portfolio. And there's so much more. We talk about understanding the debt principle. We talk about understanding the debt life cycle. We talk about understanding the debt cost over the debt life cycle. And these are things that we are seeing from our research many parties are now looking at. You know that you need the capital and you go after the capital. But after attaining that capital, you sometimes invest it in a not so friendly way that comes back to bite you. We see a lot of businesses who over the years who have been accessing grants, who have been accessing capital, that they are not necessarily experiencing the growth, the 10X growth that we all wish for them to attain. And there's a reason for that. And that is why we continue at Global Capital Inc. to emphasize the importance of understanding capital portfolios long before you take that debt. All right, the reality is this. I want to talk about it. You take a $100 million, the life cycle over that debt is 20 years. What is the cost of that debt over the 20 year life cycle? You need to understand the debt cost. Let's say the debt cost is 10%. If the debt cost is 10%, it simply means the annual debt obligation, collateralized amortized debt obligation, is going to be about $10 million. Over a 20 years life cycle, we're talking about a total debt cost of about $200 million. Do you understand your debt, your capital portfolio well enough to look into it and clearly understand these realities. And now there's a reason why you, you need to understand this because something is that I must point out and what I'm gonna point out, there's nothing wrong with it. It's way of doing business. The financial institutions, they are billion, a billion dollar empire based on your borrowing pattern. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's a business model. But my question to you, is it possible that you can learn enough about the, these capital markets to be able to put yourself in that position of strength to start to leverage some of these techniques to your advantage. We at Global Capital Inc. and 10X B and M out of LLC out of New York, we are here to share some of those information with you to ensure that you're making the best, smartest, brightest decision when it comes to buying a debt. So over the debt life cycle, you need to understand what is your debt cost. So that's one of the first things that I want us to talk about in terms of accessing debt. I'm not gonna go deep into it. 
I'm at least giving you enough information to send the light off in your head, that ball ball in your head, in terms of what is possible. The second thing that I, we put a lot of emphasis on is that once you understand the debt portfolios, you want to understand how to access those debt portfolios. Because the reality is, is that there are a lot of these debt portfolios that are out there, but many businesses uh, struggle to access the debt because you're not taking the time to understand the pre-qualification criteria. Yes, there may be hidden reasons behind why a number of persons are not able to access those debts, but access to information can change that reality. And speaking to the right, uh, you know, PFA, certified public, you know, you know, certified public accountant, and the, the right uh, financial advisors can uh, give you the kind of information that allows you to make better decision when it comes to accessing debt or accessing equity or accessing credit. So you need to start positioning yourself to get the right information to speak, start talking to the right people. So understanding how to access these portfolios is also important. All right. Now, I want us to talk about leverage, capital leverage. And this to me is very, very important, is, is, is really critical because the ability to leverage the capital in a smart, creative, savvy manner is what is going to give you the capital leverage, the capital advantage. You need to know long before you take that debt how to up level the debt. I mean, the debt must be able to pay on the principal balance that you call interest. It must be able to give you the kind of return on borrowing that capital, and it must be able to give it to you in a smart way. And now let me just give you a brief insight into what I'm talking about. In business, there is active income. Traditionally, when you borrow, you borrow, you put those capital on the active income investment. But there is smart passive investment. There is smart passive investment. And what is wrong in having some active investment and some passive investment that is generating guarantee income divorced from the risk associated with it. And that requires information. That requires the right kind of information to truly understand how to leverage debt as a means of cash flow maximization, as a means of building wealth. Again, that's why we have designed a number of you know, executive consultancy program and master classes to really help the micro, small, medium, and in many cases, large scale businesses to understand some of these new innovative approaches that should be applied to debt in a manner that allow businesses to save hundreds of thousands of dollars and millions of dollars on the debt portfolio that they are buying. Information is key. Information is power. All right, so you have to put yourself in a position of strength to be able to start leveraging these kind of information to your advantage. Last but not least, when it comes to taking out a debt portfolio, it's important to understand how to mitigate debt or capital portfolio. Because what I'm saying is not just related to debt capital, it's related to equity, credit, and credit capital. Do you understand innovative approaches to mitigate that debt portfolio? And let's, let me explain what I mean by mitigating that debt portfolio. You take the time to understand capital portfolio. You take the time to understand how to access those capital portfolios. 
You take the time to understand how to leverage those capital portfolios, but did you take the time to understand how to mitigate the capital portfolio? What exactly do I mean by mitigating the capital portfolio? I would have said earlier on that in buying a debt, there's a debt cost. So you have the principal balance, you have interest, which is part of your debt cost, but you also have debt life cycle. There's a debt life cycle analysis that must be done because it is by doing the debt life cycle analysis where you're able to arrive at an actual cost that you're paying for that debt. And once you arrive there, do you have a PFA, a professional financial advisor, or is your CPA trained in the field to really help you to understand how to mitigate this process? I just said to you, you borrow a debt of $100 million. The debt interest rate is 10% per annum. The debt life cycle is 20 years. The total debt cost over the life cycle of that debt is how much? It's $200 million. So the debt cost, the cost for, uh, for the debt acquisition is $100 million. The debt mitigation process is what puts you in a position of strength to identify new innovative creative approaches that can be used to mitigate the debt cost. And this can be done regardless of the high cost of the capital. Because I am fully aware that in developing economies, there's a lot of concern in relation to the high cost for capital. Developing and middle you know, income economies, perhaps there's a need for additional skill sets unique skill sets that can really speak to debt mitigation. Now, I must say this, the falsified notion or the misperception is that any effort to mitigate debt, which is quite legal, is going to affect the financial institutions because by extension, if you're going to influence the debt life cycle, and by influencing the debt life cycle in a positive way, you are likely to, you will bring down the debt cost. And by bringing down the debt cost, you are reducing the profitability of the existing company. And my argument is that is not necessarily so. I'm going to prepare to present to you the new arguments. One, financial institution will begin to build greater trust in the borrowers because of the fact that they are working with certified, experienced, knowledgeable financial advisors, CPAs, economists, business analysts, entrepreneurial consultants that are truly working with them to help them to understand debt and capital. And since Access to capital is not a guarantee to the business success, but these institutions are in place to help them to one, access the debt, up level the debt, ensuring that they understand the market dynamics, building out relationships with the market accommodators and the market enablers. So they are cash flowing. And along with cash flowing, they are also in that position of strength to manage the debt principal balance by paying down in advance on that principal balance, which by extension influences the debt life cycle and influences the debt cost. Should not those financial institutions have more confidence in borrowers because you now have another subject matter expert, a team of them perhaps, that can speak to the debt issue. The confidence that they are now likely to grow and have in this new development should also lend to increase lending. So you have more portfolios that you are lending to. 
that has a shorter life cycle that allows you to gain from the multiple parties that you are now lending to in a shorter period of time, and perhaps also bringing down the risk significantly. Now, perhaps it will bring down the risk associated with debt. So yes, you know, hats off to financial institution. You're taking a big risk when you put the public funds into a private entity, uh, dreams and hopes and aspiration to, you know, put a brand out there to impact the, the final consumer. Hats off to you, kudos to you. My belief is that this can lend tremendously in strengthening confidence and trust and credibility in the market. This kind of conversation, I believe, it's absolutely necessary as we talk also about strengthening our financial markets. Absolutely necessary. So I trust that you uh, take heed to these four important concepts that I've just thrown out as it relates to access to capital. For us, it's not just accessing the capital. You know, as we position ourselves to become uh, private equity investors and you know venture capitalists and dealing with joint venture partnership and merchant acquisition, uh, we are seeing the the broad picture. We are seeing the big picture, and um, of course we want to look before we leap. And in looking before we leap and in building up those information, we certainly want to share it so as to ensure that we are you know making that contribution at Global Capital Inc. and 10x being an LLC out of New York um, to create a more level playing field for business to to grow and strive. All right. So today we talk so far about a number of issues, but those that stand out to me is understanding capital market portfolios, accessing capital market portfolios, leveraging capital market portfolios in a smart way, and mitigating those capital market portfolios, which means that you literally position yourself to mitigate debt. I must throw this one in, you know, in businesses that are out there and the global thinkers, the social actors, or the transformational leaders are those who are not positioning yourself to get there. The dream makers, the game changers, the trendsetters. You know, as I said, debt capital is not the only market, financial market, that is important for you to know. We have equity capital market, but access in this market, again, is not automatic. It depends on if you're going to private equity investors or venture capitalists. The venture capitalist is going to be risk-oriented. The private equity investor will not be risk-oriented and they will have a number of pre-qualification criteria that you have to meet before you're able to access these markets. My vision here is us to present this information to you to help you to make informed and educated decisions and then point you in the direction where you can get the kind of strategic intervention to make better, more informed and educated decision as to how to 10x and leapfrog your business. That's exactly why we're here at uh, Global Capital Inc. to present a high level of financial market data. And we are partnering with uh, 10x branding and marketing out of New York. Uh, so they are able to also give you all of the, the, the strategic support that you need to understand the market dynamics. And in understanding your market dynamics is to build out a strong brand, help you to integrate that brand, make stronger than life impact and truly cash flow uh, that debt once you take it. All right. So some of those pre-qualifications that you must begin to look at, because many of you might be might not be ready immediately to start to access these markets. But as the economy grow and expand and diversify and take off, um, you might be more ready. So you don't wait until that time comes and then you start thinking about it. You have to start positioning yourself to become the proactive leader. We're going to talk about that just now. And there's three important characteristics of the proactive leader that you want to commit time, talent, and resources to learn, apply, and master. Proactive leaders think ahead. They see beyond problems and to take informed action to achieve desired results. You need to learn, apply, and adopt those same qualities to your business. 
And we'll talk about that just now. But let's go into the pre-qualification criteria. One of the things that is important to start to look at is your team dynamics. Because accessing the capital is one thing. You alone cannot 10x an empire. It does not matter how strong or talented you are. You could have your master's, your doctorate, you could have your double doctorates. It does not give you the kind of wings that you need to fly if you're gonna do it by yourself. So it's important to take your time to suss out your team dynamics. In this case, it's not just important to have members in your team. You need to have the right team players. You must go through a rigorous, a strong uh, recruitment selection placement, and I must add a climatization process. There's a particular way of thinking that you need. Some may come with a skill set, but of course, if you're the think tanker for the brand, you must have some systems in place to start the climate, the acclimatization process. That's what rep truly represents your, your corporate culture, your value proposition. And it's not just about cash flow maximization. So understanding your team dynamics is important. In my book, we have talked about that. Um, in our you know, executive uh, leadership programs, we have talked about that. We will continue to do so. Um, so I encourage you to reach out to us in the event that you need more information on this. We talk about your corporate culture, and I'll go a little bit more into this just now, because corporate culture is key. What does your corporate culture say? What does your value proposition say about your workforce, your target market, the general public? That ultimately influences the business potential to cash flow maximize. It is your corporate culture that plays a pivotal role in this regard. As we do the analysis, if you are sitting on the fence in terms of embracing this information that you'll get, and as we get deeper, you'll get to understand that, not today. Market analytics. There are many persons who are getting into business without doing the market analytics. What is the market size? What is the market density? What is the market dispersion? What are the market accommodators and enablers? And are you building out relationships with these elements of business? So you take the capital and you attempt to put the capital to work without understanding the dynamics of doing business. As I said today, what I'm about to say or what I'm saying may not be for every entrepreneur. And this is precisely the reason why I would have said at the beginning, access to capital is no guarantee to your business success. Starting a business doesn't guarantee you're gonna get wealthy and be successful because there's a right and wrong way to do in business. But I'm speaking to those entrepreneurs who want to do business in the right way and who want the supervision, the mentorship, the coaching, uh, the intervention to ensure that you can build out a a brand, a corporate culture, a value proposition that can truly help your business and your ideas and your brand to 10x and to leapfrog. It's not going to be easy work. I'm not going to sit here to you, with you and to say that it's easy. I'm not going to say to you it's going to be achieved overnight because it takes about five years to really carry that business to a certain level where it can even break even. But of course, the next experience that we would have had we have been working with businesses and within the first year we bring them to break even point because of course new innovative approaches that we are using all right later on i'll tell you a story you know um uh, about a young man that we we started work with many many years ago we started to grow but the growth scared him because he was such a cost of managing something that he can control it was growing and scaling beyond his control and the guy get cold feet but i'm not going to get into that now Oh, well, coming back to the to the issues that I'm talking about, when you go into the equity capital market, you, you need to take the time to build out your strong team dynamics. 
You need to ensure that you have a, a strong corporate culture. You need to make sure that you understand the market and analytics, what are your market accommodators and market enablers. You need to take the time to bail out historical financial data. They will come for fi historical financial data. The venture capitalists may excuse this because they are dealing with business startup. The private equity investor will not, and you need to know this, all right? You also need to ensure that you have your financial projections. And we talk about this at length. Developing your financial projection is not just sitting in your office and to say that this is the annual projection that we are looking at. That annual projection must be informed by market reality. You want to know the market size. You want to know the market density, the market dispersion. You want to connect with the market enablers and the accommodators. You want to ensure that you build out relationship with the primary consumers. You want to bring it to that point where you have guarantee interest in the brands that you're offering. And based on those information, based on understanding the SWOT analysis, trying to reduce this opportunity and trust that exists and how you're building out your strategic programs to cut against those grants, you can do, put yourself in a position to have to come much closer to a financial projection. These documents, does, you don't just do them and put them on the desk. And this is why we continue to emphasize the importance of market research. There are many businesses out there, many brands that simply exist with no market research. So when we ask you, what is your market size as a private equity investor? When we ask you where we can find your market, when we, can, when we ask you, what are the elements of competition? What is your marketing strategies to, to cut against those grades? You are not in a position of strength to respond. You need this kind of information. And this is why, regardless of how talented you are, unless your team dynamics can reflect this, you need to work with the right support companies that have a dynamic pool of people, CPS, Certified Public Accountant, PFA, Professional Financial Advisors, Business Consultant, Economists, and Legal Team to work with you. That is why we are here at Global Capital Inc. and uh, the 10X Branded and Marketing LLC out of New York to ensure that we are giving you the information. And beyond giving you the information is to give you the support to move your operation to another level. So your corporate culture is important. And I cannot emphasize this enough. In my book, I have mentioned this several times. Your value proposition should not only be about impacting the final consumer. Yes, they're important, yes. They're king, they're queens, they're the blood supply, they're the oxygen supply to the organization. But without a committed, loyal workforce that is highly motivated, that is being trained to become the high performers, the sustained high performers, and you have a system in place to at least help them actualize, self-actualize in specific areas of their lives, perhaps in relation to the business vision. If you are not focusing on those things in a modern competitive global economy, you're setting yourself up to be hurt. Because the top 100 companies, they, this has become second nature in building out their corporate culture. Perhaps I may not be talking to, to the right you know, choir. Perhaps you're just comfortable uh, being small. All right. Perhaps uh, I, I'm not talking to the right choir. But if you're the individual who is small, but you have a vision of growing and scaling and integrating your brand across the region and across the world, you're at the right place. And my advice to you, do not wait until the big companies come to your shores to start adopting these new innovative way, modern approach of thinking about doing business. Because when they come to your shore, not by intent, 
but by the design and the true nature of how business is done, they will box you in, squeeze you in, and push you out of the market because you are comfortable playing it small and you become complacent. And when they come to your shores of doing business, they are coming prepared to do business. They are coming prepared to understand their market size. They are coming to understand, coming prepared to invest time, talent, and resources to understand their target market, the target market needs, wants, and expectation, dreams, hopes, and aspiration, lifestyle, culture, and social class, groups, and reference groups. And they're going to leverage those information to gain greater access to the market. So whatever system you have in place for you know, staff loyalty, they're going to beat it down. Whatever system that you have in place to you know, influence customer loyalty and customer for life, they're going to beat it down. And whatever system you have in place to influence cost, the public confidence, trust, and credibility, they're going to beat it down because that's the nature of business. And that brings me to the other point where we're going to talk about corporate leadership. Business is not necessarily what most people think it is. It requires leadership, it requires vision, it requires commitment, it requires a new way of thinking. And uh, we are here to support that process. So if you're in business or intend to get into business, I want to encourage you to like, subscribe and share and press the notification bell on this program, this podcast, so you will be the first to get this information that we are bringing to you on a regular basis. You owe it to yourself to expose yourself, not only to my content, but to all of the right content that can help you to make, you know, better, more informed business decisions. All right. Big companies, the top 100 companies that we continue to study, they are very, very aggressive. But they are also very humane to their workforce. So much so that we're seeing members of staff that are with those established brands for over 10, 20, 30 years because of the corporate culture, because of the value proposition. Those information we will share with you as you come into our executive training programs, our master classes to ensure that you are, you are in that strategic position to make better, more informed um, business decisions. My last topic here today is to focus on corporate leadership. It's important for you to recognize that your business and your ideas and your brand rise and fall on leadership. It's important that you recognize that. In my book, I wrote about the proactive leadership. In business, if you want to position yourself to be a leader, you have to be proactive. And one of the important tenets of the proactive leader and we have coined this term, the proactive leadership, it's in my books. You must be able to think ahead. You must be able to think ahead. You don't wait until the big businesses come and start to lock you in and then you start to react. That is not what proactive leaders do. You think ahead. Any circumstances that come and come at you, you want to be two, three, four, five, ten steps ahead of the game. You think ahead. It's a social condition and a socialization that has to take place to really nurture your best minds to, to think ahead. And let's look at a practical example. We had a global outbreak, or we currently have a global outbreak, and we have also analyzed how companies treat with this matter. There are many companies who 
based on the research and the information that we get and by talking with uh, employers, the employees felt as though they were thrown under the bus. But there are many companies who, because of their this foresight to think ahead, they create the level of comfort and security and assurance for their employees that their employees did not have to worry about loss of income because the leadership of those brands was not thinking ahead. They were able to leverage PPP program. They were able to leverage personal PPP pro portfolios and so much more. And these are things that we bring out to you in our masterclass. We talk about corporate cash flow protection programs. We talk about corporate paycheck protection programs. None of these things have to, has to cost you an arm and a leg. An arm and a leg, so there's none to be fearful about. But it simply puts you in a stronger position of strength to not only withstand foreseeable, and unforeseeable threats, but it also puts you in a position of strength to have a unique, strong corporate culture, a different type of corporate leadership that makes you stand out as a brand leader. There's so much more that we can go into in terms of thinking ahead. As you think ahead, you're in a better position of strength to understand what is the problem. And when you approach that problem with a growth mindset as against a fixed mindset, you're able to identify the solutions. And as you're able to identify the solutions, you're able to leverage your team dynamics. Leverage your team dynamic to take informed action to achieve the desired result. So all that we have talked about today, access to capital, understanding and building out a strong corporate culture and value proposition, corporate leadership. If your business, your form is not taking serious consideration in these issues, that is an issue by itself. If you're small and you're struggling to scale, It simply means that perhaps some of these issues you're not thinking about. And that's why we are here at Global Capital Inc. to talk everything capital markets, and show you innovative, creative ways of not only understanding these markets, accessing these markets, leveraging these markets, and mitigating debt, equity, credit. Well, we are now partnering with 10X Brand and Marketing LLC out of New York to ensure that you get in all of the information that you need to build a strong brand that can integrate itself across border internationally and make the kind of impact that you would want it to make. Yes, a lot of what I'm saying may be capital intensive. Yes, a lot of what I'm saying may not be for everyone or every entrepreneur, <clears throat> business owner. But as I keep saying, if you are the kind of entrepreneur who wants to achieve more, you are not settling with where you're at, but you want to grow and expand and scale your brand with local, regional, international relevance, you're at the right place. We have a team of certified public accountants, economists, business consultants for many, many years. Um, my young son is now, he's now joining the rank of investment banking. He just got his, you know, uh, one of his first certificates in investment banking with honor. We have a whole range of other, you know, team lawyers and other persons to really work with you to ensure that you get the kind of mentorship coaching and the support to move your business, your ideas and your brand to a whole nother level. 
All right, so if you're in business and you intend to get into business, you know of anyone who is in business, I want to encourage you to encourage yourself and them to like, subscribe, share, press that notification bell. So you will be the first to get this information that we are bringing to you on a regular basis. My name is Gary Thompson. I'm a business development consultant by profession. I'm a humanitarian by nature, and I'm the self-published best-selling author for several books, including Managers, Toolkits, and Billionaire Codes. Today, I read to you from my new book titled 10X Branded and Marketing Blueprint, The Psychology of Business. We are here to really provide you with critical information that can help you to 10X. Yes, we're going to motivate and encourage you. We're going to say to you that you have the potential to achieve greatness if you need to believe in yourself. And as you believe in, in yourself, you need to take informed action to achieve desired results. But we know that saying that is not enough. You need hardcore information. You need a mentor and a coach that can hold you and guide your step to the land of victory with your business, your brand, and your idea. And we are here, excited to, to provide an exceptional service to you in business across the world. The beauty about what we're doing, a lot of what we're gonna be doing here, moving forward, perhaps for the rest of this year, is free. We have a unique program where we are talking about branding. Branding and marketing. I wanna encourage you to reach out to us right now and let us really walk you through that process of building a strong brand and understanding what that your brand is and building out the marketing systems to ensure that you can give your brand what is to buy. You're talking a lot about the value proposition and how that value proposition must be built out to impact four areas of your form, your business. And we're gonna do a lot of this most of it is going to be done free. All of our introductory programs are absolutely free. You have nothing to lose. You can try us. If you like us, you stick with us. You build a long-term relationship with us. If you don't like it, you can make a free choice. You can exercise free judgment and free choice. You don't have to talk to us again for the rest of life. But I'm saying you have none to lose ensure that you get exposed to the content of information that we are bringing. And I'm gonna say this, we're gonna work hard to impress you because we're studying the top 100 companies in the world. We're studying the global financial markets because we know that every business needs access to capital. We're engaging with multiple platforms that can deal with capital access. But along with all that, we're dealing with the enablers understanding your market, building out relationship with the market accommodators and the market enablers, so much more. Reach out to us, it's free. Be blessed and see you in the next broadcast. Remember, like, subscribe and share. Press that notification bell. Last day, failure immune system. <laughs>